Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is uh, tutorial one or part one of my Rogue Squadron uh, X-Wing builds and paints and uh, we're going to run you through some pre-shading on the X-Wing today. Uh, give you a quick look at that and uh, a little bit of a glimpse of what I'm planning. Also going to give you a very, very quick rundown on the airbrush I'm using. Uh, a couple of you sent me messages just asking for some details on it so I'll, uh, I'll give you a quick rundown on that too. So, let's have a quick look. What have we been doing? Well, I have pre-assembled a number of X-Wing models. Uh, so I've got uh, some 170 second scale ones here uh, that are pretty much ready to start the uh, pre-shading painting on and I've got uh, some of the 144s as well. And you can see they're not fitted together properly, they're just sort of um, together together so I don't misplace anything. But um, essentially what I will do is I'll start pre-shading these. Now I'm not going to waste your time and show you all of these, I'm just going to show you one that I've been doing and uh, give you the idea of what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, first, really quickly, in the next couple of minutes, I'll just give you a quick rundown on the airbrush. So I use a uh, Delta airbrush, uh, very, very simple. Uh, it's gravity-fed airbrush, so obviously gravity-fed means the paint comes down. Um, you can get ones which are uh, your paint pots below and the air draws it up uh, through suction. Um, it's a pretty, pretty simple airbrush to use. Uh, don't have many problems with it at all. can be a little tedious to clean, but I'd say that's probably due to all of them. I have never had a need to uh, use a different airbrush. So this was one that I got initially and it's fine. Uh, dual action, so some of them are single action, this is a dual action, so by adjusting this here I can actually, uh, well by manipulating that rather, I can actually control airflow and paint flow. So the paint's very thin at the moment, so it's just going to come out, you can see it there. Try and zoom in a bit better for you and do it a bit easier so you can see it right somewhere white, there we go. So see that little bit of paint coming out there? Right, now I can up the paint flow, right, make it really heavy, and keep it low. And I can also increase the airflow if I want to a little bit. Now, that depends on the pressure that I'm running through my compressor. Now, I vary that really, you know, you get a lot of people say, oh, I love to paint at exactly this pressure or exactly that pressure. I find the viscosity of the paint, when I thin it, I can never get the, the mix the same. So I will vary the pressure just to, to an area where I'm happy with it. So when, when I get any max flow, I'm not, you know, blasting everything away or if I'm doing it really lightly. Um, I'm happy with the pressure that's there. So, very simple, easy little airbrush. Um, I do need to give it a uh, little bit of a clean and, and uh, tidy it up a little bit more on the inside. It needs a, needs a bit of a wash, uh, but it's okay. So you see that paint there, for the most part, it's coming out nice and thin. Um, no, if, I, if I do too much, if I put, apply too much, I'm going to get streaks and everything like that, like you can see there. I'll just blow that out a bit more so you can see it. All right, so the paint is very, very thin. Uh, but you get the idea. All right, so Delta. Now, the compressor I've got, it's just a little generic compressor, um, but I do have it connected to a bottle which came with it. Now, um, the reason why I've got that set up, you can buy the compressors without the, the storage bottle attached, um, or you can buy them uh, with the storage bottle. Now, you'll hear in the video, my compressor kicks on and off. Um, so it's really just maintaining the pressure in that bottle. Uh, now, if I don't have one with a bottle, you'll find the compressor will actually run a lot harder. Uh, so what actually happens is they tend to overheat. If, you, if you're using them a lot like I do, they will overheat, uh, especially in the warmer months in, in Victoria, Australia. Um, it gets really hard to, to do a decent uh, set of airbrushing um, with the compressors and, and the hot days that we get. Um, it's just too much for it. So I've killed a few of them doing that, and it took me a little while to realize, hey, maybe I should just spend a little bit more and get a bottle attached to it. Um, it doesn't have to run constantly to keep your air pressure up. Um, it just stores it in the bottle and you've got a little regulator which flows off the end of the bottle and goes in there. And the, and the compressor is just, as I was saying, just recharging the bottle. Um, I've had this one for a couple of years now. I haven't had any issues with it, with the compressor at all. It's, it's been run fine. Whereas beforehand, I would kill a compressor within about six to 12 months. <laughs> so I got quite a few under warranty, but it was... Um, you know, within that period, but it was just, you know, it's, it's, that's not good enough. Um, and it was just because of the temperatures, how much I was using them, um, they were dying. So this way I can, uh, uh, keep them going a bit longer. So I'm just doing a little bit of pre shading, uh, on this kit here. I'm not being too, uh, finicky about it, just trying to get some color onto it. And, um, I'll go through and I'll paint it, um, a bit better later. I'll just try and zoom in on a little bit more for you. Okay. All right. So, 
Um, I will hand brush the inside of those engine bays, so I'll do that before I put it put it together. Uh, with the Rogue Squadron models, because they are uh, they're quite a unique paint schemes. I'm going to do the the wings first, and then um, the fuselage. So I'm going to do it in that order, essentially. Uh, so there'll be progress builds, which we'll we'll put up. First one I'm doing is going to be uh, Tycho's. So um, now forgive me if I get the pr pronunciation wrong, everybody. Tycho Celsius, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, his is going to be the first one that I do. So his paint scheme is actually um, a white uh, with a black stripe and uh, a predominantly red. So the nose will be white, the wing tips will be white, and uh, there'll be a black stripe separating that white from the uh, color red. Uh, from the rest of the model. Um, I'm going to do a fair bit of weathering on it. We'll have a, we'll have a bit of fun with it. And um, so we'll go through that. I'll probably do three or four videos, try and um, make it a bit quicker for you. So, but yeah, Delta 81008, uh, that's the airbrush I use. It's a cheap entry level airbrush, and I love it. I haven't had any problems with it. I haven't seen the need to go up to uh, any of the expensive airbrushes. So I'm sure one day I probably will, but um, this has not let me down. So I love it and keep it going. Um, so we're just going to show you really quickly. Just make sure I got that done right. Okay, so let's... So starting off with a lot of air, low paint. Now the paint's very, very thin, so I'm not going to get much splatter or anything like that. It's just going to be very nice. I'm going to build it up nice and slowly. All right, so you apply it too quickly, you will get runs, you will get streaks and everything like that. So don't sit on the same area. So don't sit there, and we'll give you an example. Don't sit there like that and go, oh, yep, that's dark now because I've just overloaded that area with paint. So keep it very, very thin. We can always go back and do multiple passes. All right. Don't sit in the one spot for too long. Around the engines. Okay. Now, whilst I'm doing this, and you can you can see it doing this, I will let you know I am uh, working on a few bits and pieces coming up. Um, so at the moment, I've got a, a giveaway uh, on this channel. So I'm currently at around about when I'm filming this, sort of mid 80 subscribers, 86, 87, somewhere there. Um, first 200 subscribers, I'm actually going to uh, get have a model giveaway. So I've got an A wing. Uh, giveaway so check that out if you haven't subscribed to my channel by all means you, you probably should because it's a it's a free giveaway it's going to be a raffle to join on the channel i'm also going to be running other giveaways in the future as well uh in the very near future and um i'm working on a a deal with a, a friend of mine and we're going to try and have a lot more uh, content, uh, especially Bandai Star Wars related, coming your way very, very soon now. See what I've just done there? Too busy talking, I've put on a bit too much paint. That's alright, I'll just leave that. It'll dry out. And we'll fix it up. The worst thing I can do now is go back and try and touch it up. Alright, so now I'm getting a lot of shadow because of the mount for the camera, so I'm sorry everybody. I am pretty new to the tutorials. So you see me a lot of air, light paint. I don't mind if it spatters too much, like the on final coats, things like that. You tend not to want to use as much air because you do get that little bit of a, a splatter effect occasionally. Um, but because I'm applying it slowly, I want it to dry relatively quickly. And I'm not doing it too heavily. Just do the light build up with a lot of air. All right, so I'm just going over the panel lines, making sure I can... Uh, Darken those up a bit easier. So we're going to go back to the area where I was saying earlier. I put too much paint in there. All right. So it's dried out now because it's so thin. There really isn't much issue there, um, and it's it's yeah nice to go. So I can finish finish off the shading and everything in there that I wanted to do initially, but mucked it up because I was paddling on. All right. So let's have a look. Not too bad. Coming along. All right. So engines. I'm not going to be um, keeping these engines in this grey, so I'm going to make them uh, the uh, exhausts uh, metallic, and um, I'll paint them metallic. The reason why I'm spraying them is just to help get a bit of paint on there. With the metallic colours, things like that, I find with a bit of a bit of paint on there already, it helps them, especially if it's a darker colour, it'll help them pop, help the metallic coats pop, and uh, you need less coats when you're actually doing it. 
so they'll um, they'll stand out quite quite well. Alright, keep going. Do, 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 do. Coming along nicely. Right. Um, if you if you get to build sorry guys, out of focus, forgive me. If you get to build a um, newbie mistake, if you get to build a um, uh, Bandai X-Wing, uh, by all means, uh, you, you should get one. They are lovely kits. Very, very simple to put together. Um, if you look at the review, I mentioned you know how I'm sort of scared of snap-type kits, thanks to AMT, but um, the old AMT ones, but these kits are fantastic. Um, I love them, and that's why I'm building a squadron of them. Um, I cannot get enough of them. They're really good. So that's enough for that. I'm going to come back and we'll finish this off um, in a little while. So I'll, I'll come back and do that one a little bit later myself so you guys don't have to watch it. Um, you've pretty much seen everything that I need to show you on that anyway. And I'm just going to show you a little 144 one. All right, it's a little 144 scale one. And you can see the difference. All right, difference in scale with 172, 144. Um, the 144 kits. These are some of the first 144 kits I've ever done. And I absolutely love them. Uh, they are really cool. They fit together really nicely. Very, very quick and easy builds. Um, now, I've chose some of these to do uh, some of the Rogue Squadron uh, ships on. I'll do some of the simpler ones on. I'm not going to tell you which ones just yet, um, but some of you might might work it out from that comment. But I'm just going to do uh, some of the more basic ships in this scale, essentially just to um, to save myself a bit of money and a bit of time. So there are ships I'll represent, but I don't want to spend a fortune on... Oh, well, not a fortune. They're not really all that expensive, are they? But I don't want to spend money on 170 seconds. Um, just to sort of round out a few more ships that um, I could easily do in 144. And, then, you know, these kits look great in 144. They're really good. Um, the detail on these is almost as good as the 170 seconds. And it's, it's hard for it to pick it up, but you can sort of see in there where I move it, you see that little bit of light shimmering off the, the different surfaces and everything there. It is really quite similar to the uh, 170 seconds. So I think they're, they're quite good. So once again, I'm not going to bore you, and I'm not going to be too careful when I'm applying it on this. Yeah, there are some areas where I'll be more careful, but most of it, I'm just going to give it a good pass because I'm going to apply a... Um, colour code and everything to it later anyway, so I might as well just use this as my primer. All right. Now some of you might have noticed I haven't applied a primer to the grey. Um, on the other 172nd scale that I built, I really didn't find it necessary to prime these kits. Um, they come you know, pretty much ready for paint. Um, there's no harm in priming it if you want to do it. It's not there's nothing to stop you. I'm not saying you know don't do it. You certainly can. Um, I just didn't need to on the other ones. And you see how much quicker I got that done right, compared to the 172nd. That's just pretty much done. Right, just got to do little engines. And normally I would let that sit and dry for a little while. So some of you might have noticed I've just picked up where I've sprayed recently. Um, I'm just doing that for the sake of the video. Hopefully I won't get any fingerprints on there. If I can do, I can fix them up easily enough. Um, but normally, yeah, let it dry. And um, or touch it on raised areas where you're not going to get uh, any fingerprints. All right, because that's the last thing you want is to have a nice painted model and have it all finished and go, oh wow, look at that thumbprint right in the center of it. Right, well, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to keep working on these, um, and uh, the next video will come out in, in the next couple of days. So I'm going to do these pretty quickly, guys. Um, so by all means, please uh, subscribe to the channel, have a look at the competition. Uh, please like, comment, tell me what your thoughts are, tell me if, you, if you're happy to see this, if you're excited about this series, if you're not excited about this series, if you want to see something else. Um, and the other thing I'd say is, yeah, definitely subscribe because I've got more giveaways coming up in the future um, and we've got a lot more content coming through too, so you are going to love it. Alrighty, look, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.